What's up, guys? Gumby. Coming back at you guys, man. I haven't made a video in so long, fellas. I'm sorry. But today, we're going to discuss a few things, man. We're going to be talking about the progress on Pokey. And a few more things, what we're going to be showing. I'm going to be showing you guys full detail work. And also, this is going to be my first time. What I'm going to be showing you guys, what I'm going to be doing. But let's get to it, right? So far right now, man. Pokey. Last time, if you saw in the videos on one of my shorts, guys, I was going to be hitting the dino. And we had her, we had Pokey ready for the dino, guys. The one block's good, but to make things short, man, we had issues with the, with the ECU, with the E, with the engine management system. With my AEM over here. I ended up something on my harness, fellas. I ended up messing messing up a, a resistor for the map. So I wasn't able to get readings. It was cutting off in and out on the map. So one good thing that we've already done, I sent it in and it got repaired. If anybody has any issues or anything like what we're describing right now, let me know in the comments and then I'll send you a link to where I sent the ECU, where AEM recommended me to send it to. So I sent it to him. He had it back repaired in like two weeks. Also, what we've been doing with Pokey, I managed to get the injector, express injector, 2000 CC injectors, fellas. I managed to get them already on my CNC renters. There was a few things, just just a couple minor things. I had a, I had a re-tap to show you over here. You can see I have the OEM, and then I went a little higher. We drilled and tapped. That's all I did. And then with the injectors want to sit in, I drilled it out just a little. I just went one step higher. And then with that, we managed to get the injectors installed. I've already got Pokey running. My tuner came in. We got the car to idle. It runs great. No issues. And I'm happy. But to see over here, fellas... I know, I know, since I'm saying that, why did I pull everything off? So just let's explain it. One thing, when we had it running, my tuner, I didn't have a, a engine temperature sensor for it. So one thing I was going to do, I remember that we had a sensor right here. I thought I could run that sensor to retemp, but you can't. So what I'm ending up doing right there, might as well delete that sensor. That's for the fan switch. So we're deleting it. I'm gonna put a plug on it. Since the car was running, and now with the injectors, I have a, let me show you my pump. Since I have 2000 CC injectors, a lot of people I know, if you haven't heard about Injector Express, they work, they use them in Puerto Rico. So now with the welding pump, now that I have my welding pump and I have my injectors on, now we could push for power. Now I could mess around with with methanol, M5. We could mess around with all that nice fancy stuff. And also, I can mess around with nitromethane. We are going to be mixing nitromethane on Pokey later on. But now that we have the fuel, have everything set up nice and like how I want. This block, I ended up getting from, from the scrapyard, from the junkyard. It came out of a... A, 2000, a, th a 2002 Acura MDX, the all-wheel drive. It is a J35. It's a J35 A3. It's a J35 A3. It's completely stock. Um, since might as well when we're doing this. I've never changed out the, the belt on it. So since now I'm going to be pushing the motor very hard, I was like, you know what, man, since we got the ECU fix, I even went through my harness and I went through my harness. I knew it had to be something in my harness that caused the damage to my ECU. So we went through the harness. I checked every wire, one wire, one wire by one. I saw any loose connections, broken connections, and there was, I redid the map. I, I put a brand new plug on it. 
pretty much I went through all my electrical on the car and I made it better. I'm still using I'm still using an OEM harness. It, it hasn't let me down. Uh I did I know we we're discussing later on. We did wanna we do wanna change it a fuel tech, but with you know how money is and we do it out of the garage, fellas. You know how it is, man. So I went through the harness. She runs. I even during that last time when I thought I hurt the motor, but we did a compression check on it. It's reading two two twenty five each cylinder. So yeah. I know the motor's good. So might as well. And I thought one thing with J series fellas, I didn't know this, but you see how the belt goes through there. I can't I can't fucking do the the timing. So I need to pull the motor out. And you could see how J to K fellas it is tight like a tiger. But one thing one thing I just want to show you guys, you guys get to see a lot more videos. You get to see more, how can you say, uh, picture, you can see everything. But I didn't know this, that even pulling out these bolts and everything, I can't get them out. So, and I want to replace this. And I'm going to, yeah, the water pump. We're going to replace the water pump. Since we're going to push the motor, I never revved it so high. Now we're going to be revving it up. We're gonna be pushing it. So I'm like, you know what? Let's let's replace the timing belt, might as well. You know, I have brand new seals for the cams. And you know, you could even see, right? Literally straight from the yard, man. I even think I still, I haven't pulled the heads off. Everybody even even wanna see them more. I was gonna take the half shaft off for you guys, but I'll do it in another video. But you can see I use this is a a core CG subframe. If you know, of course I have a manual rack. And then one thing if you guys don't know, if you don't have a manual subframe, you just you stack a extra bushing. I you cut an extra polyurethane bushing on it, and then you just jab it between it, so you don't have play. But that's easy if you guys didn't know that. That's how you're able to run a manual rack with a power steering subframe you just stack an extra bushing in there you cut it this is a ekk2 a rear mount and then i have solid bushings in it they're solid everything on this motor literally like if i can make a video right now of me pulling it out i'll show you guys but this motor goes in i could remove this comes out nice and easy i could put it back on like like peas and pie fellas like it just slips on like like not even tight just falls in you know what i mean i did weld my mounts this side this is ekj2 you don't run any special stuff you know it's literally i just put it on we welded it i made sure everything when i put the motor i got it nice to fit and once it fit nice and good i welded my mounts so this is ekj2 EKK2 and then EKK2 these are K series J and then I have dual dual highs you know like I said solid of course the adapter plate everyone knows inline pro inline pro I have the gen 1 I do run a twin disc there's a twin disc in there Well, I'll show you guys in other videos. Axles. I have 36 millimeter hubs on it. So I have Acura RSX Type S axles in it. So I do have 36 millimeter axles. You can see my, how everything looks over here. Like I said, you have to counter sink that bolt. Well, look. I'll give you guys a little bit more known. On this block, guys, this one, this is the one that we're going to be building. This is a, a J32A2. This is the one that I'm going to be building that we're going to put a J37 crank, J37A1 crank and rods. I'm going to be running that 
in this block. One thing I'll tell you guys if you guys didn't know on J32 and then inline pro plates the for J to K kits they require you that you only run a J32 A2 and then a J35 A3. Those are the only blocks that you could run with a Gen 1 adapter plate. With a Gen 1 adapter plate, fellas. So these blocks share, they have, the deck height is the same. So, and the bolt pattern in the back. So, vice versa, I could put the J35A3 crank in this one and rods. Um, basically what happened on this motor, fellas, I ended up at, I was, I was in Mexico. I was racing an Audi. I got the whole shot on him. And then once I banged second gear, my my bolts on. Show you guys a little bit more, man. Since we're over here, I'll explain this to you guys right now. But this bolt ended up backing out. This is one of my transmissions I'm building for a customer. We did a we did a good one. I replaced one and two. I replaced the second. I went through a second, I replaced three and four. And then of course, we, we did it with used parts, but he's gonna bring me a good set of bearings and, and the bottom and I'm gonna replace those. I didn't like the way fourth gear sinker was, so he's gonna get me a new one. But this is what I offer to here guys. Pretty much if you guys need a transmission or belt, hit me up. I'll take care of you guys. Here's the ECU, of course, and then let's go down over here. This right here, that's a K20 built PPA head pistons. That's for a future build for mine. I do want to probably put this into like a, a sand rail or something. So you're going to see this later on, fellas. This is going to be a turbo build. I did epoxy. Oh, if you guys need, there's a video on there explaining this one. I did this. This is a K20 87 millimeter PPA head V Tech Killer. You know, all the nice, nice, nice fancy stuff. And, you know, head package. And these are the J32 heads that we're gonna be using for for the J37 build, but. When the trans ended up happening to me on that run, I sprayed. So when I when I banged second and it sprayed, trans let go and I ended up floating floating the exhaust valves. And then you can see I cracked I cracked my my seats. See the seats cracked. I even fucking broke the fucking guides. So thank God these are virgin heads. But we're going to reuse these, fellas. I'm going to end up doing bronze. I'm going to send them out. They're going to get bronze guides. I'm probably going to keep standard size valves on it. I'm going to go pick up another set of heads and do port it, do the whole shebang on those. But I want to do just bronze guides, flat valves, new guides, bronze guides. I'm going to do port matching on them. Just the basic shit. Probably put some cams in it, valve train, of course. And that's going to be going with this setup. So this is going to be, this is a J32A2. I do probably plan on epoxy filling this one also, like the K-Series. To go back, so you can see what I mean by counterboard them. And then you notch, and then you have to cut over here. And then you see how much I went into the block itself. And then the same thing, I counterboard. If you guys don't know what you're counterboarding, let me see. An example. Here's one of the bolts. And you can see how this one goes in. So these are for the, if you want to know, these of course are for the mains, for the mains. So these go, you can see, 
they sit nice and nice and in the block. So that's what you're gonna be doing with, that's what you need to do for Jada K. That's pretty much all you need to do for Jada K, fellas. You put some counter, you can see how it is. I sell these bolts, fellas, if you guys need them. You could go to any hardware, but you just need to get good grade A. What, these are grade 12? They're 12 point, they're grade 12. So they're pretty fucking, they won't break. And then plus, I believe you torque these at, at 48 foot pounds or 40, 45 foot pounds. So these bolts are strong enough. I already ran them. So yes, this one, what we're gonna plan on doing, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it the same bore 89. I'm gonna put a J37 crank in it. P2R sells, sells the parts. I think I'm just gonna need that little snout for the crank. And yeah, but this is gonna be one of my first blocks that I'm gonna build and we're gonna be able to test it on Pokey. This is gonna be another one that I'm gonna be putting together. It's gonna be a H2B and an EF. And I'm 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 gonna build this one too. We did the heads already. Already did bronze guides on the heads. I cleaned it up. GMS did my machine work in El Paso. They're they're gonna be sponsoring. They've been they've been doing uh they're gonna be doing all my machine work. Gabriel, he's a very good guy. A lot of people in El Paso I know. They highly recommend him. So we're gonna be. He's doing all my machine work. He's gonna do this one. He's gonna do my honing, clean it up for me. I'm gonna see if he could do my heads. I just need to see on where I could get the, the bronze inserts. If I could get bronze inserts for it, I'll probably have GMS do my heads too. Um, but yeah, fellas. You know, this is a long video. I haven't made a long video this long in so time no, in a while. Just yeah, I'm gonna take the motor out. I'm pokey. Where I'm gonna put the LSD back in it. I have I don't know. Let me show you guys. I damaged my wave track last. I ended up. There's a couple things on. On. Let me show you this my half shaft this adapter plate i opened up the holes on it and i needed to give it a little bit of play i've ran it with the obx lsd in it and i never had issues when i ran it with the wave track i was doing third gear burnouts and then i think i ended up probably fucking cracking it or twisting the splines not twisting the splines because i already took it apart and then the inner part where the wave track where it grabs that thing fell off so what i'm thinking i probably cracked it or twisted it and i ended up friction welding my half shaft to the diff i've never done that before but i did it with this so i cut it wave track said send it in and they're going to repair it so that's what i'm going to be doing or if anybody has a, a k-series lsd shoot me a message and i'll buy it from you guys just because this doesn't have lsd right now in it i've been testing it and i've been doing the last time you see me run it i've been doing it with an open diff i i fixed that problem i believe just by drilling out the holes on the adapter on the on the custom adapter from inline pro uh and i haven't had that issue yet so i'm gonna pull the trans back out right now we're i'm gonna get an lsd installed back in it um i've already done the rear main seal i've done the front i'm gonna do the the seals for the cams i'm gonna do the timing belt of course i'm gonna do a water pump might as well man and then yeah i'm gonna put it back in double check everything and get her ready for dyno i'm gonna probably start off first on on c85 i wanna i know i could go ham but i figured i figured might as well might as well start at, with c85 since i'm gonna be doing c80 i'm still gonna spray 
I'm still gonna spray nitrous, so I'm gonna be spraying nitrous with C85. I've heard of C25, I believe, but for $160 for five gallons, that seems quite a steep. I don't wanna be spending it. I need a budget, travel cost and everything, you know how it is, fellas. So I'm gonna still be on a wet shot with the Zex kit. I'm gonna be on C85. And then just to keep it easy for my tuner, so we could just, you know, C85 with nitrous. It's not going to be a lot hard. I probably do plan on doing the filler plugs on my weight bars. So I could probably fill them up with lead if I want to. I run two weight bars, fellas. So I'm going to probably do that. Might as well. Because since I've never, fellas... I've, I have suspension on Pokey. I have I have everything. The way I set up my car last time, I didn't corner balance it. I kept the alignment since last time. I did lower it. So now with all this, I want to set up my car to what I believe I what I could do, and which I know it's already done at one seven sixty foot. And that was one time out. I know. I know I could improve my 60 foot. I know I want to I want to try to get it into a 1.5 or a 1.4. Um, I do want to spray nitrous out of the hole. We did we did set up my nitrous. I have everything now right here that I'm going to be controlling nitrous off the ECU. So we are going to be controlling nitrous off the ECU. I'm going to be able to spray it in whatever gear I want. I do have now my Magnus. I have my Magnus clutch valve. I am going to be running that. So I am going to be able to slip it in first gear. So the goal, fellas, for Pokey is take the motor out, LSD, timing belt. I want to corner balance it. I, I want to set up everything to what I can and 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 start from there i do plan on launching the car i finally have my my vss reading i never had my vss reading before so i do plan on v6s i've seen these are weird they i've noticed how they like just rolling off the line you've seen some of my videos but they like to get launched but i don't feel that with stock, with my stock gear set, EP3. I'm gonna put all my mint shit in there. I'm gonna put some Loctite on my counter bolt, a brand new one too. I'm gonna get everything ready, just so when we tune it, we are gonna push it. We're gonna rev it up high, or wherever wherever the power decides to drop. Of course, that's where I'm gonna be shifting at. The last time I've been running the car, I've been shifting, I believe at like 50, at like 5K, 55. So I've really never pushed this car a lot, fellas. But now, give me, I wish I could do it a lot sooner. You know, you know, family man of three kids, man, it's hard. But hopefully by maybe October, hopefully we should be able to have everything nice and ready. I know it isn't a lot, but it's time consuming, fellas. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys want to see. You want to see more of the J37 build, the H22 build. We do plan on bringing that EF back into my garage soon. I've done the brake lines on it. It's set up nice. He has a CTR transmission hydro. We we are going to put a, we might weld like a, a we're going to have to redo cable, convert it a cable to hydro. I've done it before on one car already. But we'll be showing a lot more updates now on my channel. You guys let me know what you guys want to see. And then we'll go from there, man. Deuce.